body, speech, and mind held in perfect oneness. I send my heart along with the sound of the bell. May the hearers awaken from forgetfulness and transcend all anxiety and sorrow. My brothers and sisters, first of all, I would like to um, welcome you all to our weekly Friday session. And this is the last Friday of the month, so according to our schedule, we have tea together, and uh, we also have things to share together. As you know that, uh, as a human, we are walk in this life and looking for something. We're looking for happiness. And because of the word of happiness, that's why we never stop looking for many things in order to make us happy. We're looking for good food to make us happy. We're looking for good job. We're looking for, you know, uh, a fancy house, anything from materialistic until spiritually, uh, just to make us feel happy. And that is what we call happiness. Beside material life, we're also looking for something called spiritual. And that's why we come to religions. And we should uh, remember that Religion is something we believe. And they will offer us some way, some guideline, guidance, in order to, for us to practice so we can gain the inner peace. Buddhism is not a religion that you come for faith. Buddhism is the way to live that make your living more mindful and more happy. And the key word that we use to use here almost every Friday, we remind, is happiness or mindfulness. We're still eating, but if we are mindful on our food, we will take the right food in order to, to afford, affordable for our physical body. We still talk every day, but with mindfulness, our words will be more mindful, more peace, and we will bring more happiness for the one who we speak to. Without mindfulness, we may take a lot of things that are extremely over, then that may cause ourselves sick. 
physically and mentally. So therefore, if I, I can tell you that 99% of the friends who come here Fridays, you all have your own belief. You still can keep what you believe. But this is the, the, the technique, the way. So can, you can make your, what you believe more strong and you become a happy believer. Not the blind one. Just faith without any reflecting. So mindfulness is the key word here. Mindfulness is the, the main thing we practice here. We still drink tea. We drink tea for many years. But maybe we just drink our tea with a lot of worries. A lot of careless. But now you come here, you learn how to enjoy the tea. The tea is already there to serve us. But sometimes because of working, because of worries, because of suffering, we don't know how to stop to enjoy. So because we are running, we are chasing for something, but actually everything is there. As long as we stop and we can enjoy it right away. So you all know that there is no way to happiness. Happiness is the way. You say, oh, you're looking for Friday. When you come here, you sit here, you're still not happy at all. You still continue to worry and, you know, you're sitting here, but you are new, not really here. So that's why the word happiness sometimes is like a dream, because we never know how to touch what is the real meaning of the word happiness? So there is no way to happiness. Happiness is the way. If we still can sit here and drink tea, we still here, we, we realize that our hearts still beat good, still work good, our, we still can hear, we still can see, that is happiness. So Buddhism is not a religion, but Buddhism is the way to live mindfully. A lot of people, they have money, but they don't know how to use the money right. That's why they may waste the money. So Buddhism is the practice. We have money, then we know how to use money. We still have, to, we all have the eyes, the ears, the, the body, everything. It's a great happiness. But the point here is, do we recognize we do have that kind of happiness? And if we recognize it, we realize it, we will, we will stop wondering, but we will stay firmly and enjoy. And that is how. So don't, the question, the, 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 this is not the answer. Because each of us will we view and practice in different way because we have different situation, different environment to practice. Some of you may have time to practice sitting meditation, but some of you have not. So you don't have time to sit down to meditate. That doesn't mean you cannot meditate. You can meditate when you are, while you are driving while you are shoveling the snow. So like Brother Lawrence, he asked us, what is your favorite, your happiness in the winter time? For himself, he liked winter because he was able to shovel the snow, because that is a good exercise. Like Michelle, she likes to step on <laughs> the ice so she can hear sounds. Let me tell you the story about uh, related to this matter. There's a monk, every time when he comes to Dhamma talk, and the first thing he, he teaches, he say, so happy, so happy, I'm so happy. One day he was sick, he lay down on bed and he said, so suffering, so suffering, I'm so suffering. 
And the other monk heard that, and he said, and he came and asked him, "Why? You usually say you happy, and today you say you are suffering." And he said, "When I am not sick, I am happy. When I am sick, I am suffering. That's normal. Why you ask?" And he said, "He said, someday I saw you fell down." That's really hurt, but you still smile. And today, just a minor cold, minor fever, and you shout out and you say you suffering. And the monk said, "Come close to me, come close to me." And the other monk come very close to him, and he said, "You tell me, suffering. I I I told you I'm suffering, and I'm happy. I'm happy. So." Which one is right? Do you heard the question? He said, "When I say suffering, and someday I say happy, let you tell me. Can you tell me? Happiness is right, or suffering is right? And this is what is the answer here: neutral." If we turn ourselves into a very negative person, always suffering, that no life. And if we turn ourselves to become a positive, always happy, that means we don't see the other facts of life, the other face of life. The practice here is: when you sick, you pain, you're not well, you're not feeling well, physically, mentally, you know it. And someday there is nothing wrong with your physical body, nothing wrong with your mind. You happy, you know it. This is the practice. We cannot stick on any way. If you extremely happy, and someday there are things come that you don't know how to face. Let's say we always practice happy, but if you go to a funeral. You cannot just sit there and laugh, and, you, and 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 people will say, "Why you laugh?" Oh, I'm so happy because I practice, right? Even you so happy, but you know you are coming to a funeral. Then you have to know that you are attending a funeral. Then you should practice and you know adapt with the environment as a funeral. When you go to a party, it's time to be happy. Don't just sit so sad and why. Oh, life is suffering. Life is suffering. The mind. The, this is the Buddhist practice. When is wherever you live, what kind of environment you can adapt easily? Because every environment they have their own variable. For example, winter. We say we like winter, and the, each of us we have different way to like it. I like winter because I can skate, I can snow,、uh, I can ski, I can shovel the snow like a good exercise. I can、uh, walk on the ice. I can hear all the cracks. I can use the snow like a,、uh, the, the cold weather like my big freezer. I can、uh, cool off something very easily, very fast. And then, if few more months later, spring come. Then we still enjoy the spring. When winter, summer come, we still have things to enjoy. When it's autumn, we still have things to enjoy. Like I like the autumn because the yellow leaves fell down, look very pot, very, and we can step and walk on the dry leaves. We can hear different sounds of the leaves, and、uh, we can see many color of the leaves. So they can, the 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 autumn give us a beautiful、uh, nature, the image of nature. So if we only stick to what is called religions, then there are many things that obstacle, that prevent us. But if we know that even what you call religion, but we have to understand. The purpose of religion is to offer us the way to live happy. 
Do not just take the way. Do not just grab the map and sure that you're on the way. You only grab the map, you're not on your way unless you really walk on it. And do not suffer and sure your map is the absolutely right because if the map is not update, you may get lost. <laughs> Even the navigator, if you have the old one now, some of the new street, new area, they open. The, the old GPS cannot tell you where to go. So it needs to be updated. Religions have to be updated. Otherwise, it cannot off offer the real practice for their believer. If we just stick to what is what we attach to, and we are not, you know, we just frame ourselves. Is that uh, help you a little bit? That you can open and, you know, you can practice easily. Let's say if we are a flower, and what is the purpose of the flower? To decorate. So no matter where they decorate you, this is the vase of flower. I put it here so we can enjoy like a tea ceremony. After the tea ceremony is done, I can bring in the washroom and leave it there so to make my, my washroom look nicer, fresher. The flower ne will never suffer. But the one who have the idea, flower only in the living room, then we are suffering, not the flower. You see what I mean by that? So remember, religions offer us the way to be happy, not to offer us the way for us to suffering for. They're offering us the way to liberate, not to off offer us the way to block ourselves. And if we can see it this way, we practice easily. Did you hear the, um, the recitation on happiness? This is the same way in the way we pray. In this practice, when you pray, doesn't mean you pray to the Buddha so the Buddha hear your prayer. But it is the time for us to reread all the teachings. So every time we read it, we are able to make the teaching more clear. And we make, and then we take it strongly so we can apply in our daily life. This is the way we pray. Let's say the Buddha is the one who gives the teachings. So he doesn't need to sit there and listen to us so we repeat what he taught. But there is a ceremony that the time we formally recite the teachings in order to make the teachings become reality in our daily practice. So the Buddha always reminds us our fortunate is we still can have the eyes to see the blue sky, the cloud. We still have the ear to listen to the bird sings. 
we still have the tongue to taste, we still have the hands to, t- to touch, we still have a good nose to smell, and that is already a fortunate. That is already happiness. But sometimes we forgot. So that's why when you read it, then you he can hear all of that. I, I vow not to let forgetfulness whip away my happiness. Sometimes we have a very cozy family. We, doesn't, we, we did not know about that. And we have another, kind, another, another relationship outside from our long-term relationship. So we use the short-term relationship in order to, to destroy the long-term relationship. And that is what we call forgetfulness. If we are mindful, we will not do that. We know that if we want to protect our happiness, we learn to protect the happiness of others. Mindfulness will remind us we are now 40 years old, 50 years old. We should know our age, our physical sickness, or our own health in order to work that appropriate for our health, our physical body. So again, I want, according to our broader recitation, I would like to another one, another time to introduce you. What is the meaning of the prayer? How to pray and why we pray in Buddhism. But we come to the Buddha with the image of the Buddha. We sit there formally. We recite. And remember, that doesn't mean so he can hear his own words. But we read it in order to make the words become the energy, the vitamins, to nourish us. So to remind us, we already know. But if things are not remind, we may forget. We used to forget many things that we have. Let's say sometimes we know that we have um, a set of uh, a tea set at home. But when you need to use it, you try to looking for you don't know where they are. So once a while we need to clean up the house and to, re, to refresh where you install things. So when you need them, you know where to find them. Sometimes we know we have it, but now is the time for us to need it. We cannot find it. And we're willing to go out and buy the new one or use something temporary. But the proper one, we know we have it, but we, don't, we cannot find it. So there are things we very valuable, we store in our house. But we don't see them often, that's why we cannot use them. We use something very temporary. But there are things that are very valuable and ready there for us to use we don't use. Same thing. We have so many valuable capacity within us, but we did not know how to cultivate and make that become possible. That's why, you know, I always remind myself. So every time when I come here on Friday to share with you, it doesn't mean I give you a talk. But while I'm sharing, it's also give me a chance to remind myself too. And without you coming here, I may stop searching and looking for and practice. So you are the one who support my practice. And I also the one who support your practice. We supporting each other on the way. So when we are driving, we are stop at the stop sign. Doesn't mean we make the others one safety, but it's we also safety. 
So remember every single thing we do for life. We don't do for others only. But at the same time we doing those for ourselves. Because the more we give out, don't forget, we still live in the same environment. If we bring, uh, we give a lot of pollution, we cannot run away from this pollution. So if we yell, we're angry in the house, we're still in that house to, en- to intake all kind of that negative environment. So it, the practice here is to, to help us to see the inter R, the relation, the related between us and the others. That's why one incense light up, the whole room smell. We all can come here and enjoy the fragrance of it. One person doing good thing, the whole community effect. But if one person doing bad thing, the whole community also affect. Reflecting in the incense, if I light up in this room with the, the sandalwood incense, not only me to enjoy the fragrance of it, all of us when we come to this room, we also enjoy the fragrance of it. But if there is something very bad smell in this room, we all have to smell the same. So what is the practice, what practice here again? To remind us, we always relate it. So there is no distance between religions. Different way explain different way, different um, language. You call a cup. In Vietnamese, we don't call a cup. We call something else. So, but the purpose of this cup is the same, just different name. And mindfulness will help us to see that. And if we don't have that lot of argument, lot of distance. So sometimes in the same house, the wife and the husband sometimes miscommunicate. And because of the miscommunication, that's why arguments happen. If we do have the good communication, nothing wrong. But because of that miscommunication, That's why we learn to open our heart, to listen more carefully, to reflect more carefully, instead of angry easily at every single word that person said. Sometimes that person said that, they don't mean it. Just this is the only way how they say, how they use the words. And if we're angry with the words, then we will take the word seriously and destroy the happiness between two. Remember, words only temporary thing for us to use to communicate, to understand each other. But because with our mindfulness, we would take the word seriously. We use the thing called temporary to de- to damage something called permanently. And this will, will be, you know, not, not worth. Drinking is something to help us to satisfy our thirsty. No matter tea or water. Sometimes we suffer because of tea or water, but we forgot what is the purpose of drinking. <coughs> And meditate, (coughs) meditation, help us to see things clearly like that. 
Because why? Why we're able to see that? Because we come. Once we come, we can see things clear. Once we unable to become, it's like the water boiling all the time. And not only burn ourselves, but we also burn the others. And remember, the more the boiling water, the more it evaporates. The more you leave it cool, the more you can see things clear. The more you're angry, the more you just destroy yourself. We burn a lot of calories in ourselves. We eat a lot of protein, a lot of vitamins. But a single time we're angry, we burn thousands of calories in ourselves. It's waste. It's like when you take some medication, you need to avoid some of the food because this food may make your medication become nothing. So if you take this medication, you should stop some of this kind of food. Same thing. Mindfulness. You know, I can talk about mindfulness all the time because this helped me a lot in my practice help me to see things help me to see what I how can I deal how can I face in many different situations sometimes just a small work but with mindfulness will help you to be finished easily and fast and quick and nothing Big deal. Without mindfulness, still okay. You still will done it, but take time. And you have hardly to deal with it. So I encourage that we all take time to practice meditation at home. This is not related to anything. What you believe. This is the technique we all need to practice. It's like breathing technique. If we breathe good, we gain health. We don't breathe good, we damage health. So every day spend time using breathing technique. Once you can breathe slowly and calm yourself down, you can see a lot of miracles. People will say, oh, what's a bless? Not actually, no one you know, follow us and bless us. But we bless ourselves. We have the master key in Him. The point is that we know to open this master key for this building, for this building. All doors you can open. The other building, they have their own master key. Don't think that you have the master key and you can open all the buildings. Hey, Lauren, share now. I have it. So Brother Lawrence will sing a song. Đây là tình đạo thiên âm. Uh, so I will sing. Uh, well, I, I don't, I'm not going to sing, but I, I want. To, uh, I think everyone can sing. So everyone that knows a song. Um, there's a song uh, called uh, "Tayas." Um, we just sing. It's called "Here Is the Pure Land." And um, I think my brother's going to help me sing. Here is the pier land, the pier land is here. I smile in mindfulness and dwell in the present moment. The Buddha is seen in autumn leaf. Oh,
beautiful song. Um, so I'd like to uh, thank everyone for uh, coming and uh, spending their time uh, with us and uh, for your sharing as well. Um, uh, just a few announcements. Uh, tomorrow we will have, we're having our uh, uh, mindfulness day. Uh, it's a it's a day of practice. Uh, for, for those of you who don't know, it's a day of practice um, that we have each month, uh, where we take out a we take out a whole Saturday uh, from nine until five uh, to practice uh, mindfulness. Um, uh, we start the day at nine o'clock uh, with a meditation, and that's uh, from nine until about nine or uh, oh, forty minute meditation. And then after that, we practice uh, walking meditation. And then we come back and we sit a little bit more. And then we have a, uh, a mindful lunch. Uh, after the mindful lunch, we, have, uh, we practice uh, total relaxation, uh, which we practiced if you were here last week. I think we did that last week. And uh, after the total relaxation, we have a, a, a Dharma talk. Uh, and after the Dharma talk, we have a Dharma share. And then after the sharing, we have uh, some uh, a short chanting. And uh, so the, uh, the, entire, the the entire day is uh, it's uh, it's free, um, but uh, we were also happy to accept any donations. Um, uh, and uh, if you are uh, if you cannot attend the whole day, you can also attend a portion of the day as well. So if you can only attend from meditate from the morning meditation till lunch or after lunch. Uh, Whenever you can make it, and uh, however long you can stay with us, uh, it's up to you. Uh, but the entire day is open. Um, but the only thing is that if you if you are going to come, uh, uh, I guess uh, if you're going to be here for lunch, then uh, please let me know. If you haven't registered yet, um, please let me know so that uh, I can let the cooks know and uh, we have enough food for tomorrow. So. Uh, I'd like to invite everyone to listen to uh, the sounds of the bell uh, to end our session today. Body, speech, and mind held in perfect oneness. I send my heart along with the sound of the bell. May the hearers awaken from forgetfulness and transcend all anxiety and sorrow. Bye.